Golden Sun is one of the most highly acclaimed games on the Game Boy Advance, well beloved even today for its flashy battles, innovative systems, and of course, its music. Motoi Sakuraba, the man responsible for the game's score, has covered a lot of musical ground over his illustrious 30-year career. From the light-hearted, upbeat energy of the Mario Tennis games to the solemn backdrop of the world of Dark Souls. And Golden Sun's soundtrack stands out to me as a particularly effective blend of his various stylistic influences. The orchestral sound typically associated with fantasy RPG games like this is given a hard rock edge with Sakuraba's prog rock origins seeping into the soundtrack in a very cool way. Today I want to break down how these different musical conventions interact under the umbrella of Sakuraba's own compositional style to create the musical identity of Golden Sun. Being a self-taught musician and composer, Sakuraba didn't come from a classical background and had to figure out how to compose orchestral pieces on his own as game soundtracks began to trend in that direction. His orchestral writing is focused mostly on strings, which is not uncommon for fantasy games, but he'll also use choir in an interesting way. Rather than carrying the melody or chanting in Latin or something, the choir will oftentimes be used in the background to provide a new texture to the piece with syncopated rhythmic figures or harmonic pads. In Dark Souls, Sakuraba succeeded in crafting a unique musical identity for the game's world that made frequent use of choral textures in this way. Check out how the syncopated rhythmic accents in the male choir part underscore the frenetic string melodies in the Taurus Demon theme. In the more classically oriented pieces on the Golden Sun soundtrack, we can hear the same approach. The game's title theme uses strings for the melody and bass parts while filling out each chord with the GBA's closest approximation to a choir for the inner voices. Also note here the use of timpani driving the bass line, an orchestration choice that often appears in Dark Souls boss themes as well. Timpani is typically used in these kinds of fantasy game scores more sparingly, either marking each chord change with a single hit or playing a rolling crescendo into a new section. If I had to guess, I'd think that Sakuraba's expanding on the timpani's role is due to its power and presence in the orchestra resembling the power and presence of the electric bass and drum set combo that make up the rhythm section in a rock band, a setting that Sakuraba, by his own admission, is more familiar with. This rock influence comes through all over Sakuraba's work and can usually be seen in Golden Sun via the rock rhythm section of bass and drums underpinning the orchestral colors that carry the melody and harmony. In the Venus Lighthouse theme, a steady driving eighth note bass line and drum set backbeat are combined with a horn melody and choir laying out the harmony. Beyond the instrumentation though, you can see an interesting blend of rock and classical in the compositional style of the piece as well. The melody is mostly pretty simple, focusing on the root and fifth of each chord in a straightforward style not uncommon to rock music. The chords leading up to the tonic at the end of the section, this D to E to F sharp minor, make a flat 6, flat 7 to 1 progression that is basically ubiquitous in this kind of rock style. We'll see a lot more of this later. However, the 5 sus to 5 move, typically associated with a classical style, is seen here and used all over Sakuraba's other work as well, and this Picardy third ending to the A section as the D to E moves up to a surprise F sharp major is obviously classically inspired. For an example of Sakuraba's writing in a pure rock style, let's check out one of the Game Point Breakpoint themes from the original Mario Tennis. Just taking the first 16 bar section of the tune, we see that all but two bars of it are comprised of either a 1, flat 6, or flat 7 chord. The 
these common chord structures and simple chord tone focused melodies stay out of the way of the real focus of this kind of writing. The rhythmic energy generated by the fast tempo, the driving bass and drum parts, and the heavily syncopated eighth note synth figures. I think the real benefit of blending rock and classical musical conventions in this way is being able to have the best of both worlds, combining powerful rhythmic intensity with more colorful harmonies and orchestration. For an example, check out Felix's battle theme from the Golden Sun sequel, The Lost Age. A full rock rhythm section sets up a driving 12-8 groove, where the consistent rhythmic tension of the dotted quarter note against straight quarter note rhythms is used to propel the song forward with a level of adrenaline perfectly suited for a battle theme. The harmony is once again almost entirely made up of 1, flat 7, flat 6, and 5 chords in a minor key and the melody once again revolves mostly around predictable chord tones. But string melody and choir pads fill out the rock instrumentation and we see a full modulation to a new key every 8 bars or so. This is facilitated by the extremely classical move of using a diminished 7th chord built off of the leading tone of the new key to set up the shift. Sakuraba's work isn't all bombastic boss themes, though. The Elemental Stars theme from the original Golden Sun sees a lot of the conventions of Sakuraba's writing that we've explored so far used to create this dreamy, ethereal sound through clever use of delay. The piece opens with two layered synth parts, this outlined E7 sus chord in the bottom line, and a simple E minor scalar figure above, together creating a repeating ostinato figure. What makes it interesting is the fact that the top line is layered with an echo displaced by a full eighth note, turning the line into a series of clusters that give us this ethereal quality. When the melody and harmony come in, it's once again common chord tones outlining a flat 6, flat 7, 1 progression with strings and choir, but the constant presence of this initial figure among the changing surroundings inject the whole piece with a powerful, mystical sound. Even though the emotional goal of this piece couldn't be more different from his more obviously rock-influenced writing, you can still see Sakuraba rely on harmonic and melodic conventions of the genre. An interesting shift comes about halfway through the piece, where the original ostinato figure is replaced with a new synth line harmonized in thirds, establishing a 5-8 time signature. Shifting time signatures like this, particularly the use of 5-8, is another hallmark of Sakuraba's writing, one that betrays his roots in progressive rock. Yes, Sakuraba's origins lie in the progressive, with much of his solo output consisting of face-melting keyboard solos shredding over horrifyingly fast time signature changes. If you're into that kind of thing, I would highly recommend his album Gikyo Kuanso. It's on Spotify, and it is extremely badass. Interestingly enough, the prog rock genre is also a combination of rock and classical music, but in a completely different form from the symphonic rock of the Golden Sun soundtrack. Rather than using orchestral instrumentation and classical harmonic conventions to color traditional rock grooves, prog rock historically used rock instrumentation and harmonic conventions to explore large-scale musical forms and other musical ideas derived from the classical tradition. It's mostly in boss fight themes where Sakuraba can really let loose with this stuff, and that's where we see most of the odd time signatures, time signature shifts, sudden key changes, and virtuosic passages that have become hallmarks of the prog rock style. 
The Satyros battle theme from the original Golden Sun features all of these things. We once again have our driving 12-8 feel at a blazing fast tempo with the piece flitting between the keys of E minor and A minor before landing in the key of F sharp minor. The structure of the piece is much more complex than the pieces we've looked at so far, and this, along with the use of organ and synth sounds, really evoke that prog rock sound. The highlight of the piece comes about halfway through with this metric modulation from 12-8 time to 5-4 time. A metric modulation is a shift from one time signature to a new time signature with a totally different pulse or feel, but one that uses a common subdivision with the time signature before it. In the Satyros battle theme, the 8th note pulse from the 12-8 time is maintained, but the accent is shifted from every third 8th note to every second, and then the bar is cut from 6 of these quarter note beats in length to only 5. While this shift sounds incredibly jarring in the tune, if you tap out constant eighth notes over this section, you'll find that they transition seamlessly between the two time signatures. If that's a little too square for you, take a look at the final battle with Doom Dragon theme from Golden Sun The Lost Age. The piece is mostly in a sprightly 5-8 time, but regularly shifts to 3-8, 6-8, 7-16, and more. The melody is mostly a stream of 16th notes that arpeggiate the underlying harmony, occasionally breaking into more colorful scalar melodies harmonized in thirds. The hectic rhythms are paired with harmony that jerks you through different keys, diminished seventh chords flying at you with reckless abandon, and this perfectly captures the scale and intensity that a final boss battle should have. But there are pockets of really nice relatable harmony and melody hidden among the craziness. I love this section in 5-8 that gives us a simple melodic figure of a walk up and back down three notes of the scale, repeated over an F-sharp minor to C-sharp 7 flat 9 over E-sharp to E7 progression. Slowed down, this progression is really nice, and paired with the simple melody, it works really well as a sort of respite from everything that came before it. That is, before we abruptly jump into another metric modulation to 12-16 time over a D-diminished 7th chord. Or how about the similar section that immediately follows, where we get four bars of truly evocative melody over this A minor chord before the tune breaks back into 16th note shredding. This is quickly balanced out with a harmonically ambiguous, dissonant 5-8 section that builds up the piece to its boiling point, climaxing with a torrent of unison 16th notes. In short, this tune kicks my ass in the best possible way. Having this kind of intense technical writing alongside the subdued mysticism of the Elemental Stars theme and the earnest heroism of the title theme is what makes the Golden Sun soundtrack so special. Motui Sakuraba has crafted plenty of musical worlds to accompany plenty of games, but perhaps none so stylistically diverse and musically cohesive at the same time. It's a perfect blend of influences that make up Golden Sun's musical identity while simultaneously showing Sakuraba's musical personality throughout the whole soundtrack, and I think that that is something to be celebrated. Big thanks to patrons Ben Wong and Zhu for requesting Golden Sun. 
I missed out on playing the game when it came out, and catching up with its music was a real treat for me. If you'd like to join these two lovely and undoubtedly handsome gentlemen in supporting this channel, please consider checking out my Patreon page here. You can follow me on Twitter at 8BitMusicTheory, and if you're going to be in Boston on March 1st, you should definitely go check out the 8-Bit Big Band Show happening at the Berkeley Performance Center. Not only will you get to see impeccable jazz orchestra arrangements of your favorite video game tunes, you'll also get to see my buddy Insane in the Rain present his arrangements of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl tracks with his Insane in the Rain Big Band. Grace Kelly and Leo P of Too Many Zoos fame will be joining as special guests. Really, all of the musicians on this show are just absolute monsters. So if you're able to go check it out, you won't want to miss it. Use coupon code MUSICTHEORY for $5 off your ticket. I'll put a link to the show in the description below. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.